Wait for it. Wait for it. We've waited long enough. It's finally here. The best shots of 2023, where we take the most outstanding shot from every professional tournament this season and pit them together head to head by getting you to vote for the winner. And as usual, I'll be helping you out with that decision by recreating all of these shots as accurately as possible and then playing them in the fewest possible attempts. Which means for our first shot, we've got to go all the way back to the beginning of January in the Masters, where Luca Brussels found himself in a little bit of trouble, having to pot the green down the cushion with a rest. Not only does he manage to pot this really tough looking shot, he also screws the cue ball back down the table for the brown. So is this one as tough as it looks, potting off the cushion like this? It obviously is. The pot's difficult and I have to screw back past the middle pocket and get enough pace on the cue ball to get across for the brown. And I just couldn't seem to pot it and hit it hard enough at the same time. Luca lost the frame anyway after he went in off the blue and unfortunately on my table this was just about as well as I could play the shot. Still in January, it was this shot from Judd that really caught my eye at the World Grand Prix and reminded me a bit of the blue from the famous Alex Higgins clearance. Judd ended up losing out in the final to Mark Allen in the end in a tense deciding frame, losing 10-9. All I could remember about this shot from when I played it in January was that you had to hit it really hard rather than screw it back. But this meant I was struggling to get anywhere near the pocket until it went in and I played it fairly well. Judd hit a third cushion but this was about as hard as I could strike the cue ball. This positional shot from Jack Lazowski, where he opens up the two safe reds on the cushion was the best shot of the German Masters. This is a match Jack would go on to win 5-0, however he'd end up losing out in the semi-final and still hasn't made his maiden victory. Unlike the previous two shots that appear to be serious contenders for shot of the year, this one doesn't seem so difficult, but I promise you it's deceptively hard because even though the pot's really straightforward and the cannon isn't too difficult, you need to be really precise to get the perfect cannon that'll leave you on a red. I kept hitting the first red over and over again, but I simply wasn't accurate enough to push it onto a pocket. So after all this, I can see why this was chosen as a shot of the German masters, and I was glad to finally get it in the end. This is the Sean Murphy shot from the Welsh Open that got everybody talking as he looked to be in a completely impossible position here but used the jaws to end up not only hitting the red but potting it at the same time. Sean did well in this event getting through to the final but he lost out to an informed Robert Milkins. But this one's so unusual, I really think this could be a contender. Fortunately, I remembered exactly where in the jaws I had to hit this one. So on my second attempt, I was lucky enough it went in. Not a perfect recreation, but pretty good. This is possibly the best huge shot of the year from Ali Carter as he pots a long red around 11 feet away and screws all the way back the same distance. It was queuing like this that got him all the way through to the final of the Players' Championship but he lost out heavily to Shaw Murphy in the end. Now obviously on a regular table like mine under normal conditions there's no way I'd be able to make the cue ball spin back any further than just a couple of inches. So here we're seeing the first introduction into this video of a super clean shiny cue ball and it seems to be working quite well. I just need to get back a little bit further towards the green. I was really happy with my cueing with this one as well and ended up in more or less the perfect place. Now to the World Championships, but not the one in Sheffield, the Six Reds World Championships in Thailand, and Ding Junhui making a crucial snooker escape against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last 16. This could have made the difference between him winning the match and not, and as he made it all the way through to the final and won it, it's a pretty crucial shot. 
By putting backspin on the cue ball, you make it straighten up when it strikes the cushion, and this creates the angle you need to be able to pot the red. But it's difficult to find exactly the right amount of backspin, so I was pleased to get it so quickly. It's Ding Zhongwei again, this time at the Tour Championships, where things aren't quite going so well for him, and he has to pot this difficult black and get round the table for the last red, and manages to pot it down the cushion, getting another frame back. However, he still ended up losing the match 9-5, but this was probably the best shot from that tournament. Because there's only seven matches in the Tour Championships, it's unusual to see a lot of good shots. However, this was pretty decent given the circumstances, and I actually got on the red better than Ding did. On to the qualifiers for the World Championships and Ben Wollaston potting this ridiculous pink down the cushion and then cutting the black in to take the frame. This allowed him to battle back against Daniel Wells and end up winning the match, however he ended up losing in the next round. For whatever reason, I find it really difficult when you're playing a shot out of the jaws of the pocket like this to find the right angle. I was close on a few occasions, but with most of them I'm missing this shot by quite a long way. And there's a similar shot coming up later where I also have to cue out of the jaws of this pocket, where I couldn't quite seem to see the right angle either. I was actually a little bit disappointed with the World Championship qualifiers this year because back in 2022 there were a lot of crazy shots going on, however this year it wasn't quite as good other than this one. This Luca Brussel shot where he pots the black, spins the cue ball around the pink and the blue and uses side off the bolt cushion to cannon the yellow out was mine and pretty much everybody else's shot of the world championships. He looked like he was falling behind against Mark Williams before he made this excellent clearance and from this point onwards he went from strength to strength eventually winning the tournament. Obviously getting the cue ball to arc perfectly around the pink and the blue so you hit the yellow is pretty challenging. And when it happens there's no guarantee you're going to get in position. So what the shot requires is both a lot of backspin and a lot of power. And for whatever reason since I had my cue repaired it's this type of shot that I've been struggling with the most. So I'm really struggling to play a shot with a lot of power and a lot of spin at the same time at the moment. So this shot was a complete and utter nightmare as it felt like I should have been getting the cue ball roughly where it needed to go on about half the attempts I played, I was struggling to get it right about 1 in 10. Which shows just how difficult these shots are. I even miscued at one point because I was trying to get so much spin on the cue ball and play it with so much power. It goes without saying that this would be a lot easier to play on a TV table where the cloth's more reactive. However, for me, this is still one of the best shots of the season because you need extreme precision to be able to screw the cue ball off the bolt cushion like this and head towards the yellow. And finally, after a huge number of attempts, I got the yellow away from the cushion. Not very good, so I had to make the pot on it to prove I was actually in position, which thankfully I did, otherwise I'd have to play it all again. Jackson Page powers this pink in so he can get the cue ball all the way back down the table for position on the black and win the frame. This was at the WST Classic, an event brought in to replace the Turkish Masters, and it happened earlier in the season, but since it wasn't televised I didn't really know too much about it. This however was definitely the best shot from the event. You may have noticed from my first attempt I put my hand on top of the cushion which didn't give me enough cue length to play the shot properly so on my second I put it behind the cushion which definitely worked however I just had a little bit too much angle and I ended up hitting the jaw so I just slightly straightened up the shot so when I got the pink eventually the cue ball would come back down the table and I might have straightened it up a little bit too much as the white ended up on the cushion but it was still pretty good. John Higgins knocked in this really awkward plant in his semi-final match at the European Masters. This allowed him to take a 3-0 lead against Judd, however Judd would eventually come back and win a tense decider. 
as you can see because the plant's nowhere near set to the pocket and because of the white being so close to the cushion i was finding it really difficult to even hit the first red in the right place because the red spread everywhere each time I played a shot and it took so long to put back, this one felt like it took a lot longer than it actually did. And it turned out in the end, if I struck the cue ball a little bit lower with less angle for my cue, I found it a lot easier to line the shot up properly. At some point earlier in the season, Stuart Bingham potted this ridiculous long red down the cushion and screwed the cue ball all the way back into bulk at the same time. This was my choice for the best shot from the Championship League. I'm not sure at what point in the season it happened and there were a number of good shots, but this was the main one that happened when the frame was live. I was using a combination of backspin and right hand side to get the cue ball back into bulk and as you can probably tell from my first few attempts it wasn't going so well and I was struggling to hit the ball in the right direction at all. So the fact that I potted it so quickly was a miracle more than anything else. I even got the white back into bulk. Mark Selby doesn't want to cut the red into the middle pocket here because he's afraid he'll lose the cue ball into the blue. So instead he screws the red in off the pink. This wasn't my first choice for the best shot of the Shanghai Masters, but looking back at it now, I'm going with this one. And I'm pretty sure I didn't choose the best shot of the tournament because it's a double, so obviously we're playing it next week. However, this week I managed to get the shot on my second attempt, even if the pink didn't quite go in the right direction. Robbie Williams plays a number of good shots in his 4-1 Welsh Open win against John Higgins, but this was probably the best of them, as he pots the brown and cannons the red away from the black. The frame and match were already over by this stage, but it's still a great shot. Of course this is from the British Open rather than the Welsh Open, that's coming up later, and Robbie ended up losing in the next round 4-1 to Scott Donaldson, but this was still a great win over John Higgins. I thought this shot was a natural angle when I tried it before, and it's possible that I wasn't quite putting the white in the correct position, and maybe it should have been further over to the right hand side. So I resorted to trying to manufacture the angle with a small trace of left hand side but I kept slightly under or overdoing this which meant I kept slipping by the red and black off the top cushion. I was actually really frustrated with this one because it didn't seem like it was too difficult to get the cannon and every time I potted the brown I just wasn't getting near enough. It took me a lot more attempts than it did the first time I tried this where I got it first time and eventually I managed to finally get a cannon on the black. It wasn't perfect, but it did just about stick the red onto the pocket so it would go. Ronnie O'Sullivan had already won this match at the English Open when he pulled off a ridiculous double but didn't end up getting in position, so he potted this yellow and opened the reds up with a cannon off the side cushion. I didn't really know what to do with this one, so I just put left hand side on the cue ball and guessed where the pocket was, and it came out pretty well in the end. Ronnie's run out of position again, this time at the Wuhan Open, but not only does he manage to pot this green, he spins the cue ball around three cushions, cannoning the red away. He ends up winning the match, but ends up losing out in the quarterfinals. I've got to stop saying ends up so much, but when I played this back in October, the main problem I had with the shot is I kept getting into the cue ball too much and playing it with too much backspin. It's a stun more than anything else with a lot of side to spin the cue ball around the angles. So I got the grips of this a lot quicker this time, and luckily I think the first time I got near the red, got in behind it and got it out from the cushion. By the time we got to the Northern Ireland Open, Judd Trump had really hit form, podding reds like this down the cushion, which is probably even better than the Stuart Bingham one we saw earlier. Not only did Judd win this match, he ended up going on to win the tournament, his third in a row. 
Another difficult shot to pot down this cushion. On my first attempt, I fluked it, thought I'd never do that again, and seemed to have played exactly the same shot the second time around. After playing all the previous shots, it now felt like I was queuing really well, which was good because I didn't think I was going to be as lucky as I was with the Stuart Bingham one. Fortunately, however, it went in pretty fast, even though I hit the yellow. Next we have the Judd Trump shot from the Champion of Champions that really caught everybody's attention. He spins the cue ball around two cushions here to flick the red perfectly along the cushion over the middle pocket. This was an excellently played positional shot and Judd made it all the way to the final where he faced Mark Allen similar to January. However this time Judd didn't get anywhere near him losing 10-3. I can't reach the shot right-handed and it's too difficult for me to play left-handed. So what I've done is put the balls on the opposite side of the table and simply flip the image around. It seems fairly obvious, but the last time I did this in a video, a lot of people asked me how I got so good left-handed. So I thought this time I'd better point it out. And I'm only going on about it so much because I haven't got anywhere near yet cannoning the red out. I keep either hitting the brown or the blue on the way through to get to the red. But finally I got through the gap and on target with the red and just about nudged it over the pocket. No, no. After we find Will in Jersey, we got a Gon Shen Z shot, which is possibly the hardest shot I've ever had to play. And that's because he pots this red from out of the jaws of the pocket and screws the cue ball all the way back into bulk. You have to play this shot really hard and at the same time pot it really accurately down the cushion, which makes this shot from the international championships nigh on impossible to get right. What I do remember from trying to recreate it at the time, and it was similar to the Ben Woolison shot earlier, which seems to cause me to strike the red on the wrong side, so I end up having to aim further to the left, hitting it more into the cushion than it looks, in order to pot it. I was actually pretty happy with my queuing though once I got this lined up fairly well because I kept getting very close to potting the red and kept rattling it in the jaws on almost every shot which is exactly what I was going to need to do if I was ever going to pot it. And when it went in it did feel fairly inevitable. Mark Selby has a really awkward shot of the UK Championships bridging over the black, but he still manages to pot the blue and somehow find his way into position on the pink, allowing him to win a nail-biting match against Barry Hawkins. This wasn't initially my first choice for the best shot from the UK Championships, but looking back on it now, it was such a close game, I'm going for this one. The weird thing about this shot was Mark hit the middle jaw with the cue ball, and I've set it up absolutely perfectly even favoured the cue ball to break a little bit wider and I can't make it go anywhere near the middle pocket when I pot the blue. The only thing I can think of is Mark must have put some right hand side on the cue ball. I couldn't get anywhere near it so this is the best I could do. As it's the best shot of the year, I'm letting you vote for your favourite shot. If you follow the link down in the description, you'll be able to vote for any of the 20 shots you've just seen, and I'll announce the result probably in the next video, which will be out before the end of the year, and then we'll look at